first one sources and the last one is disintegration of the soviet union and rise of the unipolar world that is the last chapter in paper 2 now how we need to see this means first you draw the map india map earlier also you were comfortable in drawing map okay in our gs class we have done so many things so many times in another page you draw world map world map you can draw equator this becomes our reference start with the africa then you take it to india southeast asia now here yeah. indonesia just below it australia now you draw europe here europe then you take it like this you merge like this then now south america
సౌత్ అమెరికా నార్త్ అమెరికా is then now here england this is larger picture of india when we see the position of india in the world this is the one now open the syllabus first one it is saying sources paper 1 one is sources to understand what has happened in this particular land it happened 2000 years ago 4000 years ago we don't know what exactly unless those people left some kind of remains only we come to know that upsc has clearly mentioned that those remains are first one is archaeological sources second one is literary sources in the human evolution initially there was no script have you any, do you have any idea the period before the invention of script what we call in the categorization of history mesolithic and we will give one particular time one description to such stone age based on the script whether script is available or not suppose if script is available we call that particular time period as with one name before the script we consider with a different name that is called prehistory another one is history proto history is something which is in between for example indus valley civilization we have the script script is there does it mean we consider it as a history we can consider but problem is we don't know what, how to read it no we are not yet deciphered that is why we call it as a proto history even though script is there we are not able to read it and there is another way of interpretation also before the use of metal that was called prehistory once metal started that becomes proto history there are two multiple theories with respect to this that's why for prehistory and proto history only archaeological sources yeah with respect to indus valley civilization uh, vedic hmm chalcolithic ha ha this is with respect to upsc language this is proto history for example you open the question paper 1 you open the question and you see the second chapter prehistory and proto history and you see the syllabus also what syllabus is saying in the second line uh chapter second chapter beginning of agriculture neolithic and chalcolithic so if you go to the syllabus second chapter is prehistory and proto history 
we are saying proto history is indus valley civilization but indus valley civilization is the third chapter and go to questions go to questions there is one question so that you will get better idea chapter 2 prehistory and proto history now you see question number 2017 to 2017 if you see the emergence of non harappan chalcolithic cultures in central india and the deccan mark a change not only in the subsistence pattern of people but an overall transition from pre to proto historic period here it is not talking about harappan civilization clearly mentioned emergence of non harappan chalcolithic so that means stone age paleolithic mesolithic up to neolithic is considered as prehistory and chalcolithic is considered as proto history because chalcolithic is only metal there is no script so this is where indus valley civilization also we consider as proto because with respect to script and with respect to the metal usage we consider chalcolithic also proto history because question itself is asking that way critically analyze that one okay so this is how we need to these sources chapter after doing entire paper entire ancient india then we will come to the sources otherwise suppose if i start taking literary sources kalidasa sources or grammarian sources or sangam literature if i start talking about that you may not have clarity what happened first that's why after finishing everything then if we come to the sources chapter you will easily connect which are primary sources which are secondary sources up to raj tarangini we should be able to understand raj tarangini means which is the year 11 1149 that means 12th century so up to 12th century we have the literary sources after knowing the complete chronological order till raj tarangini then we will come back to the sources then we will just outline it this is how now second prehistory and proto history our history says today our population is the largest population in the world now initially how these human beings came from which location human beings came and spread in different parts of the world to understand that we have to have idea this research says from this location from this location they started migrating this is the place where our homo sapiens the modern man evolved but from here he spread people spread everywhere how do you think people came here because that time it was very difficult to cross this ocean ha huh. pangea was there much before much before the evolution of the human beings ha huh, okay ice age around 10000 bc we consider it as pleistocene age but before that itself people started migrating how people reached to this location yes from yes 
from Russia part, they entered this location and from there, Alaska, very good. So this is how it came. So always we need to remember that globe also. This way, people migrated to different parts. Similarly, they came to India as well. And what is the evidence? What is the evidence to understand these people were their means? The stone tools which they left. Tools. And our archaeologists, after independence, they intensely searched for human remains, human fossils. Stone tools, they left. These stone tools, after thousands of years also, they can stay. But the human remains, they did not stay. They decomposed or in environmental change, they'll vanish. Our archaeologists, through these stone tools and some human fossils, we come to know. When it comes to human fossils, we got very few references only, in only in few places. Remaining all the places, we got stone tools. Now, if I show, UPSC will give This chapter is particularly important when it comes to the map marking. Do you see this? UPSC marks different locations. And in these locations, in one of the places, UPSC may say, hominid fossil site. This is 2012, 13. Now you observe this. This is the map and they have given what are these numbers? What are these numbers? 60, 70, 80, 90. Longitude. And here, latitudes. So based on this, we should be able to identify exact location. 14, 15, 16, 17. And you see from 20. What, what difference you will observe here? To this and this. Ah, exactly. Physical completely. And here, political boundaries are also given. And one more observation. Huh. Hmm. Pakistan also there, Afghanistan also there, here also. Ha, ha, okay. So uh, these parts are not there and these parts are shown. Do you see Tropic of Cancer here? So this is Tropic of Cancer also clearly given. Here it was not given. Because some sites, they are just... Above the Tropic of Cancer, some sites are just below the Tropic of Cancer. In that means, UPSC is making easy. This is 2020. 21, once again, they changed. But 2022, they gave like this. We cannot say UPSC, that is up to UPSC completely. We should be ready with both. But one common thing between this and this is uh -huh. at least one place here you will see sometimes they may come one place one place one place two places one three places and you will find in some locations Bangladesh also do you see anywhere Anywhere here in 2019, 20 also, here also, here also. So few sites in Afghanistan, few sites in Pakistan, few sites in Bangladesh and rest of the places like this.
during mauryan time period there were some uh, references mahasthan gad for example there when famine took place some relief measures were taken so we have for example dhaka before the independence also dhaka was important port center a important place so that's why some locations mostly our concern is ancient part only in ancient times if there is any important area we will identify that and of you observe if they give the state location it is very easy for us in which state which location is there these stone tools and human fossils we need to identify in which states we got the evidence in this process we cover so many map locations this locations 50 marks itself so there itself when it comes to prehistory and proto history instead of question they ask more of the map location if we go here you can see can you open the um, pyq book do you see no question in 2022 21 20 19 no question 18 no 17 15 mark and 16 15 mark so what happened to these years maps so most of the question with respect to prehistory and proto history maps around 7 to 8 questions in map belongs to this place that's why this shows the importance of prehistory and proto history Twenty to twenty-five, fifty maps, twenty questions. Yeah, total number of questions. I will show you this. This is last year question paper. these of instructions will be given to you 250 marks now you see question number 1 and 5 are compulsory here question number 1 is map and fifth question is containing five questions of 10 marks compulsory and out of the remaining three are to be attempted choosing at least one question from each section that's why in section a two questions you have to write compulsory section b two questions compulsory other one your choice this is section a first question now you see paleolithic site mesolithic site with burials neolithic pit dwelling early village settlement neolithic site neolithic chalcolithic now see up to sixth question also stone age only harappan unesco site seventh one Eighth one, megalithic burial site, place of second Sangam. Now you see up to eighth question, almost prehistory and proto history. Next place of Sangam, then Buddhism, earliest Satavahana capital, place of inscribed statue of Ashoka, Gupta hoard of coins. Now you see chronology wise, once prehistory is done. after vedic period mahajanapada time period also we have so many capitals they will come mauryan time period we have some capitals also different regions also they will come post mauryan period capitals and other locations gupta ancient port ancient uh, ancient port dockyard and port suppose if upsc says near lodal and say is ancient port only lodal only yes but the location may not be lodal 
maybe some other location now it is 2022 this is which one 14th question 2022 yeah so local so likewise whatever may be the location Our concern is what is the exact location? Then oldest Jesu church, church also, center of Gandhar art. Now, if you see, church comes in later. But Gandhar art pro, uh, after Mauryans, that's why the order may not be exactly, but most more or less in the beginning stage, you will find uh, Chalcolithic up to Chalcolithic. Then earliest Vishnu temple, Shiva Buddhist temple, earliest Chaitagroha. So Buddhist temple sites, capital sites, important uh, trade sites. Likewise, you will get all these. Now, if I show you. This is how questions will come. You see this part, UPSC terminology. These are the ways, how many number of ways UPSC can ask that particular question. Ancient administration center, an art center, Gandhara art, school of art. When it comes to Buddhist site, just a Buddhist site, but in how many ways it can ask the Buddhist site alone. These are the number of ways. Huh. Ah, it's okay. Okay. Site name is only Buddhist site, but UPSC can give different names. A Buddhist site, a site known for Buddhist remains, a site of Buddhist monastery. If we have all the Buddhist sites in one place, and again, statewide, if we have, then automatically we will recognize. Now come to this capital site, similar way. Chalcolithic, now you see. Chalcolithic, just Chalcolithic, a Chalcolithic site. In 2017, 14, 13, 12, if you observe in 13, in 13 itself, two questions from Chalcolithic itself. In 12, these many questions from Chalcolithic itself. So this shows the importance of check and chapter more than the question map importance. Megalithic, Chalcolithic. In some locations, we have Neolithic evidence also, Chalcolithic evidence also. That is why they will combine Neolithic, Megalithic, Chalcolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic, Chalcolithic period, Chalcolithic site. If you go to Fossil site. This is fossil site, site of important fossils. This is where exactly whatever stone tools remains, whatever human fossils remains, our archaeologists are doing research to identify in which locations in our India earliest human settlement started. We need to identify those places. Identification of those places are very important when answering map question. Harappan site, then in Harappan site itself in multiple categories. Hold site, inscription site. Now, if we go to Mesolithic site, a Mesolithic site, a Paleolithic and Mesolithic site, Mesolithic, Mesolithic site with burials. Neolithic site, Neolithic pit dwelling, Neolithic site, Paleolithic, Paleolithic, Paleolithic factory site, Paleolithic site. Likewise, more than question, map related questions are important and these 50 marks. Most importantly, when it comes to prehistory, proto history, these places are a little bit complicated. Suppose if you say out of 25, at least 9 to 10 questions will be related to this. 
and remaining 10 questions from Buddhism, Jainism, Mauryan, Guptas, like that it will come. So this shows the importance of second chapter, prehistory and protohistory. Third one. Once people came and settled, because of this river, Indus Valley, people started settling and they utilized the resources and they developed a very big civilization in this location. And this civilization is Indus Valley civilization. This Indus Valley civilization, once civilization started, now can you see the chapter? Three, origin, how it emerged, date, what is the date? Extent, characteristics, decline, survival, and significance, art and architecture. Now, broadly, I will give you these dimensions you can write. It did not mention only one line it mentioned. When it comes to, if we see the previous year questions and all the subtopics, with respect to timeline. With respect to timeline, what is the period? In during which time period? flourished. Second aspect is geography. In which location this framework is going to be common for every period. If you replace Indus Valley civilization with uh, Vedic civilization. Next chapter is Aryans and Vedic period. You replace this one, these dimensions are going to be same. Where Aryans, what is the timeline of Aryans? And what is the geographic location of the Aryans? Next one. The subsistence pattern. subsistence pattern, how they lived. When it comes to how they lived, it can be in the initial phases, hunting and gathering. People lived on hunting and gathering. Second one, after hunting and gathering, how people moved to the next subsistence can be fishing, then started learning, producing their own crops that we call agriculture. Ah, hunting and gathering also we can include, but for our study of prehistory, initially during Paleolithic time period, they don't know how to fish. In Mesolithic time period, they dependent on fishing. That's why we are separating segregate. Otherwise, you can include fishing also as part of this. But in the historical evolution, in Mesolithic time period, they were depending on hunting the animals. Yes, tools changed, technology changed accordingly, subsistence pattern also started changing. How they lived, what kind of food they eat. After agriculture, then naturally for agriculture, they require some kind of implements, arts, 
or artisan artisan works industrial activities you can say in the modern times then these people professionals these are professionals there must be someone who exchange the tools that becomes a trading activities when the population is small all these activities used to take place in small location but when settlements when the geographic spread increased now they also became more and more professional today we see agriculture separate profession industry separate and services separate because this is the evolution of the geographical spread and also the number of population this is going to be same now you replace with indus same thing to replace with uh, mauryans again going to be same now after this in the initial stages they were more worried about how to live but after settling agriculture came everything comfortable life came now they started protecting themselves they started protecting people also they started protecting their geography also that is where political system emerged and we can also consider this subsistence pattern as part of economy because in prehistory proto history terminology we call it as subsistence pattern but in the later time period it emerged as economic dimension next one after this they have to protect this in order to protect separate profession is required to protect these people how they protected they have to protect their grain they have to protect their children and when two different tribes are there it's a competition for resources like today today we have so many countries that time so many tribes so many groups of people and this is how political system emerged so there must be some kind of rules within the group so that people will not fight always for the resources this political system when it comes to political system who is the ruler or we can say leader gradually the meaning of leader itself changed in the earlier times the people one of the person was chosen as the leader later once one family is chosen and from that family onwards one after the other same leadership from the same family that's how monarchy emerged kingdoms when they started expanding their geography emperors empires but in the initial stages there was no such kind of large geography their only aim was just to protect their children their animals their lands and now what they are going to protect as a whole we consider them as a society in society men will be there women children then gradually different social systems emerged like slaves then when different people emerged they started segregating were not system likewise different uh, categories in the social dynamics emerged and the society angle now in order to do all these things now they represent certain kinds of just a second they need some kind of technology 
they started developing different technological tools. May. We log the phone. Fine. These technological tools, this advancement. And gradually, they started representing all these social norms, political norms, and other economic dimensions in the form of art and culture. They developed gradually some belief systems. some crafts they developed and gradually all these beliefs combinedly it became a religion different people different religions now these dimensions are going to be similar one now you see indus valley civilization in the syllabus First, it talks about origin, how it emerged, what is the timeline in which geography it emerged, date and extent, already there, date, extent, characteristics, the moment characteristic means all these things, what is the subsistence, what is the political system, society, technological, art and culture. Now, after this, any society, it reaches to the peak stage, first it will begin it reaches to the peak and gradually it declines. Any culture or civilization. Civilization means it emerged even into the urban level also. When it comes to urbanization, we consider that particular time period as a civilized one. Survival and significance. After the decline of these characteristics, they will not suddenly disappear. In this location, some socio-economic setup emerged. After this, these ideas entered into different location. That is what the survival and significance. Last part is art and architecture. Can you see the previous year questions in In Indus Valley Civilization, come from 2022, 20, backwards. Just you see only this. Origin theories. The urban character of the Harappan Civilization was the result of neither of any outside influence nor a sudden act, but gradual evolution of regional socio-economic factors. Social factors, economic factors. You will find all these terminologies, same terminologies. Origin and decline. Economy. Did the mastery over agriculture act as a leverage for the rise of Harappan towns and cities? Purpose is to 150 words, to write 150 words. Your challenge is 
to concise the content. For this question, these are the dimensions. This is how what we learn from our history. We can learn, we know at present, we know we are agriculture. We learned agriculture from our ancestors. We learned crafts from our ancestors. We learned trading practices from our ancestors. And our family values came from our ancient. And from the conditions of women, whether it is better or worse, that it has its roots in ancient past. Whatever caste system, whatever evils we are seeing today have the same issues in the history. And polity, the political values which we are today following, ancient roots. For example, Kautilya's uh, still we are following. Ganasanga's Republican nature, we are still following. Some of the elements which are there, the local self-government in Cholas, still we are following. This is what we will learn. But we have only this much space. How we will organize? We want to write all these things, but only we have space this. Just village local self-government itself can be a question. That can just itself is a 10 marker question or 20 marker, 15 marker question. That time you are going to elaborate fully. But when this question is about everything, then you have to concise all these aspects in single page. This is where UPSC style of writing, understanding and knowledge is different. But according to the demand of the question, converting that knowledge into these dimensions. Religion, still we are following ancient roots. Literature, we are so much literature. Some of the best literature in the world still. Sculpture, architecture remains, painting remains, music, dance. It is still relevant because every day we are enjoying these art and cultural features that has the roots in ancient India. If we don't know about our ancient past, we cannot really appreciate what is happening today. There were some positive developments in ancient that we are enjoying the fruits. There were some evils and we are working to eliminate those evils today. Caste system, untouchability, women, injustice, all those things, they have roots in ancient. We are today working for that to eliminate them. We can organize into one kind of table. Whenever economy comes, minimum, these are the minimum dimensions. Whenever society part comes, these are the dimensions which we are going to highlight. Our syllabus also organized in this way. So you just main write this table. You bring evidence. You forget about the debates. If question is about a liberal society, you bring all this. In Vedic time period, liberal elements were there. In Shatavahana time period, liberal elements were there. When it comes to early medieval time period, many women rulers were also there. In Kashmir, Didda, women ruler. Then Rudrama Devi in Kakatiya, women ruler. You need to bring all these arguments. If question is more about how society was liberal. But if question is saying there were so many restrictions on women in when it comes to social religious reform movement. It is the one of the crucial areas where our social religious reformers, uh, they worked very hard. Yes. So those elements, practice of sati, that was prevalent. You need to highlight that because Raja Ramohan Rai fought very hard to eliminate that. Women literacy was very poor. Women were not given education. That's why Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, he worked very hard. Jyoti Bapule and Savitri Bai Pule, they worked very hard to 
uh, women education likewise you have the reference of liberal society on one hand you have the limitations in the society also on one hand you have to bring all both arguments and what is the present condition if question demands if says forget about uh, different historian because different ideologies were there in the historical study different ideologies marxist historian look the society in a different way nationalist historian look the society in a different way but upsc expects us a balanced view from us as well as a nationalist even colonialist view also if it is required because whatever initial days whatever study we have studied history colonialist view initially yes as a his upsc aspirant as a bureaucrat you need to take the balanced approach because our society is a de democratic society people have their own opinion they try to speech is there we should not cut tail that otherwise innovation will not emerge whether you argue whether you accept it or not second part but initially you should allow the people to express themselves it itself is a strength of the society allowing multiple versions itself is a strength of the society otherwise entire society if you expect entire society think in single dimension then society becomes stagnant innovation will not take place and we will become colony of some other country in future ideas if if there is no idea if there is no avenue for expression of the skill then obviously society becomes stagnant you come to fifth one aryans and vedic period aryans and vedic period expansion of aryans in india now you see this in this table expansion means which will come geography next one vedic period religious and philosophical literature art and culture religions literature okay transformation from rigvedic period to later vedic period that is political social economic life they have given political social economic life significance of vedic age significance of vedic age means all these elements everything economically socially politically art and everything evolution of monarchy and varna system political monarchy varna system come to period of mahajanapada sixth one formation of states mahajanapadas that is political development next republics and monarchies you can include here monarchy as well as republic republic next democracy republicanism we are following the same principle rise of urban centers in economy you can include or in society urbanization next to trade routes trade routes in economy economic growth introduction of coin age economy spread of jainism and buddhism religion rise of magadha nandas political iranian and macedonian invasion and their impact external contact seventh one mauryan empire foundation of the mauryan empire political angle chandragupta kautilya ardhashastra political ashoka ruler political concept of dhamma political edicts then polity administration economy art comma architecture and sculpture external contacts religion spread of religion literature you see everything every part of the syllabus will fall under this then post mauryan contact with outside world growth of urban center economy coin age development of religion mahayana social conditions art architecture culture literature science every word came in the table whatever is there in the table everything now early state only difference this will change geography will change timeline will change but the dimensions are going to be remain 
this is what our entire ancient india whatever syllabus used whether it is guptas mauryas post gupta harshavardhana pallavas you take any one delhi sultanate also same thing we are going to study sometime question can be asked on economy completely that means you are going to write all these things sometime question can be only on agriculture that time you will going to write deep agriculture sometime only on urbanization sometime entire society sometime only village local self government or suppose if chola administration everything will come this is how our syllabus is organized even though it appears very big but ultimately this is the only thing each and every point in the syllabus we are going to write we will cover all the previous year questions also i will give ready made answer also i will make you write in the class also and i will give every day one one question so while you are coming uh, that is your homework you write and submit okay tomorrow onwards uh, we are going to start with the ancient part from tomorrow onwards uh, prehistory because sources we will do in the end otherwise after knowing entire syllabus we will come to the sources then only you will appreciate that stone age yes stone age onwards we are going to start tomorrow all right this you can keep you you understand them you you take both both you take ha ah, okay fine you analyze entire ancient india today all right